right. That's see, that's not that's terrible, and that's not what I meant. That's I mean, terrible. I mean, that's like, terrible. Think of something else. <laughs> think of something that's not good. Um, <laughs> just I'm sorry, better, I just peed a little bit on myself. <laughs> This is the Kimmy Val Show. Let's just go on and spill the tea. This is one of the realest persons I've ever met. My mission is to encourage every single woman. We're here to lift y'all up. There's no one more effective than moms. You mess with the bull, you gonna get the horns. I need coffee, I need Jesus, and I need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> if you can bring a smile to people's faces, why would you not? True confidence is knowing who you are and why you're here. Hey, y'all, Kim Gravel here, and this is The Kim Gravel Show. And this season, we are finding our purpose, finding our calling, and leveling up our lives, and we're gonna do it together. I gotta tell you, this episode is probably our most requested topic that we get via email of any other topic we get. The emails we get from people are heartbreaking. Like, honestly, the emails we get from people are about being lonely. They are about, I don't have any friends. They're about, I don't know how to make friends. They're about, my friends have abandoned me. It's really, really hard out there for people right now. And I... Honestly, I'm I'm not exactly sure why it's maybe harder than it has been in the past. Do you think it's harder than it has been before, Kim? I, I've got I've got a few I've got a few opinions about the matter, but I will tell you that um you can have it. There, there's some tips and tricks. There's some things that you can do to have these long-lasting friendships that 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 we all desire and that you desire. Um and I wanted to do this episode, Zach with what I believe is like one of the most important relationships in my life and and definitely my most important friendship. And y'all, after this break, I'm bringing my very own BFF, Amy Goins, into the mix. And we're going to talk about how to develop and cultivate best friends when we get, we'll be right back. Say what? The Kim Gravel Show just surpassed 1 million downloads, and I cannot thank you enough. I'm overwhelmed by your support and your love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The response to this show has meant the world to me, and you mean the world to me, okay? So if you love this, go leave us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify, and tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's grow this community together, and let's step into our confidence and our calling and level up our lives right here on The Kim Gravel Show. Mwah. Thank you. Over a million downloads. I can't believe it. Wow. Woo! Yes. People have fewer close friends than they did in the 1990s. Can you believe that? I can believe that is, it. Well, if you have no close friends at all, trust me, you are not alone. So many people experience this. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do a friendship show Without, I mean, we haven't called you in yet. You already amen in the thing. So just sit back <laughs> and we re say that. I swear. She's uh-huh. keeping all this in. Hallelujah. <laughs> just, you're not single. keeping this in. <laughs> Every second of this. Oh, we haven't brought Amy in yet. Just uh huh. So uh-huh. what was I saying before Amy interrupted me? You with were her saying t- wind tunnel and her you, amen. She was, she was uh huhing if you have no close friends at all. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So if you have no close friends at all, you are not alone. And tonight, I can't do the friendship show without bringing it my BFF, Amy Goins. Are you there, Amy? It's Amy. <laughs> Am I on? Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Can I speak She's now? scared to talk. <laughs> yes, you may speak. All right. <laughs> Hi, Amy. I'm here. Amy, it's no. great to hey, see hey, you. Hey, hey, Zach. Hey, Kim. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Y'all, I'm telling you, Amy and I, how long have we been friends, Amy? 20, I think four. It's 23, 24, wow. something like that. It feels like forever, doesn't it? <laughs> so, did you mean in the year 2000? <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I think we met. What year is it? It's 2023. Yeah. It was 1998, I think. Yeah. Like we're t- oh, I told you we were. Oh, so it has been. So it's, it's 25, been more. 25 oh, years. Wait, I told what's you 25. 25 years. Goodness. What's the 25 year anniversary? Silver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 25 Our silver years. friendship anniversary. I'm checking that. Silver, you're right. Nice. Where's my gift? Where is my gift? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, 
I wanted to bring Amy on because um, there was this study done and researchers in the University of Virginia wanted to figure out like how influence, how friendships influence how we approach like daily challenges in our life. So they, listen to this, Amy, they placed 34 students at the base of a steep hill. Um, the students who stood alone perceived the hill slant as steeper and thought it would be harder to climb. Listen to this girl. Um, and the students who were standing next to a friend thought the hill looked easier to climb and gave lower estimates of how steep it was, okay? But listen to this. The longer the two friends had known each other, so say it's like our 25 years, you and I are standing at the bottom of a hill, the less steep the hill appeared. And so the research shows that friends can change our view of challenging situations, Wow. Just the mere presence of a friend in the same room can lower your stress. Listen to this. And how friends essentially allow us to outsource some of these emotional burdens that we're carrying. And y'all, we're carrying more emotional mental health burdens than ever before. So mm -hmm. it doesn't shock me why everyone is saying, I'm having a hard time finding friends. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. I don't know if it's more than ever you can't find a friend. I think we need them more than ever now. Do you know what I'm saying? Ooh. The need is bigger. Like in, the, in good, the 1990s, yeah. we were not experiencing the the challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all, in 1990, I was how old? I was 18, 19. <laughs> 18, 18. No, yeah, yeah, 18, 18 yeah. Wow. I mean, so it was a really different world. There was no social media. Yeah. There was no uh, instant connection contact with people via text. I mean, remember you had to dial mm -hmm. a phone. Was cell phones in back then? <laughs> I think they had car phones. Oh, did they no. have car phones? When they had was car it phones. like? Car phones you had that, just, you have one starting of those? To, just starting, yeah. yeah yes, my dad had a box. car phone. And it was like yep. a big yeah. phone. It was like, hey, big time Willa Dilla. Yeah, it was like really like bon chica yeah. bon bon. Yeah. And it was so, probably I mean, like, well, they first started, not that this show is about car phones, but they first started where go. you could just get it installed in your car. <laughs> and then, remember, then they, you could, you could then tag a bag, walk around with it. With a bag. So, but anyway, yeah. So, you'd walk around yeah, in your Reebok tennis shoes downtown New York with a skirt on and a big old <laughs> phone pack. And that big, it had that huge battery on it. And you could like flip loved down yeah. a little. And it was like, the, oh, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. But back then, yeah. that, I, I, like I said, I think that. We didn't need a friend emotionally, and, and that need. That's a good. That's a good point. I think that could be something to that. Okay, so I've never thought of it that way before. Amy and I, we've been friends for twenty five years, and I have found these little six rules for healthy friendships. Um, and I think you know what I always say, Amy: to have a best friend, you have to be a best friend. Mm -hmm. That's not only to other people, but to yourself as well. There has to be some kind of like self wholeness there before you can attract a whole friendship to you. Um, yeah. So I would say that's my number one jumping off point, wouldn't you, Amy? Oh, for sure. Yeah. You have to, you have to, um, you, a friendship really is just like any other meaningful relationship that you may have. And the only, you know, I think probably for most people, the most meaningful relationship you would have would be a, a, a spouse or significant is other. It? But also, I, as I'm sitting, saying that, well, <laughs> I'm thinking about, you know, with parents and things. But yeah, it's it's hard work, just like yeah. any other any other meaningful relationship. It, you have to put time into it. You have to have, um, uh, I think you have to have uh commonalities. You don't have to be just alike, but I think it's important to have similarities and maybe your core beliefs and things like that. Um, and, you know, I think one of the, uh, one thing about our friendship is that over the 25 years, there have been times where it ebbs and flows in what we each need. And, you know, I know you've said that too. And I, I you know, sometimes you're the strong one and I'm the one that needs you right, know, the, right. whatever. Yeah. And then, it, and then it flip flops. So you kind of go through different stages in a friendship, but. Well, and I, so, so the number one rule is like, you have to have support, trust and complete honesty. Um, mm -hmm. And I will tell you, we live in such a world that is fake, phony and height mm. that when in, in trust is, is really, really hard to find. And let me tell you this too, friendships are, there's different levels of friendships and there's different seasons of friendships. Like I have many different friends. Amy has many different friends, but they ain't but one Amy. 
You know what I'm saying? So, so look at friendships like um, layers of cakes. I don't know. I always go to food, girl. I'm always going to <laughs> sugar. <laughs> it's I love a good cake, cake now. God, but. honey, don't you love a good cake? <laughs> or think of it like as, as a layer of an onion, you know, or, you know, something like that, because there's so many different types of friendships. So when you say, I don't have any good friends or I don't have any friendships, I'm going to, I'm going to say, well, I think you might need to start cultivating some surface relationships and then start from there because to build a deep mm-hmm. lasting 25 year ride or die friendship, it takes time. It takes time mm-hmm. and it takes a lot of work. Um, but trust mm-hmm. is at the core of that. And um, I will tell you that I, you have to trust yourself so that you can build trust with someone else. So you got to start with you. But I trust Amy with my life, with my children's life. I trust Amy with my money. If, if something happened, and I, I mean, I'd give her, I trust her with everything. Now, Amy, do you feel the same about me? Of course, 100%. <laughs> A little hesitation there. <laughs> yeah. No, of course I trust you. Yes. Yeah. With everything. Well, no, that's I a- just- <laughs> No, I'm just, so, so, so do you agree with me that that's probably like the crux of it? Yes. You've got to build that core trust. Yes. You definitely have to have trust. I mean, and, and that, like you said though, but that takes time because that takes being in circumstances where you earn that trust, you know, Mm -hmm. with whether it's, whether it's a quote secret or something you're struggling with internally, or it could be financial or something like that. You have to be in situations where that trust is earned. Do you remember? I remember when I first knew, all right, okay, I can trust her. (laughs) Because Amy will tell you loyalty and trust to me is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like there is this, Kevin Hart has this thing, this little bit he does in his standup that's on TikTok talking about friendship. And he says, my bull crap is your bull crap. When we're friends, what I go through, you go through. And it's to the point with Amy and I, it's not, there's no words. Like we'll be sitting in a meeting if something will go sideways. And this is Amy's eyes. Y'all looking real close right here. This is Amy's eyes. I'm sitting here. This is, I'm Amy. I'm sitting next to Amy. Something goes wonky in the meeting. Like you're like, somebody's like, mm, that ain't right. And Amy does this. <laughs> and I know, oh my God, like, I don't, I don't even, that is like, this is Amy. Shut up, Kim. Shut it down. <laughs> shut up. Shut it down, girl. Shut it down. She don't even have to look me dead in my eye. It just has to be a, that is absolute 100% trust. But I know the minute Amy was going to be my BFF, I'm going to tell you why. We were at, you probably don't even remember this, Amy. But we were oh, at God. a women's retreat, and I used to wear a big old girdle, like from under my breast all the way down to my oh. knees. Do you remember this? Yes. And Amy had would, a miracle suit. A miracle suit, and Amy would pull up my miracle suit every oh, time. Gosh. Well, there was that's a already, photographer that's in there. Friendship, like that, that's already oh, yeah. a level. Well, yeah. I can tell you some more stuff. I won't because it's it's not appropriate. Uh. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to say this to Amy. I think I smell butt. But anyway, so Amy. <laughs> Oh boy, I think I need. Oh my God, they just smell bad. That's, <laughs> we will never tell that story. That will never hit this airway. I'm just saying. That, but Amy, Amy knows exactly. There are a few select people out there that know knows. That. I think I smell bad. Oh anyway, God. so Amy's pulling yeah. up my girdle, okay? And there was a photographer there <laughs> clicking pictures. Do you remember this? And so yeah, I didn't and wait. I'm, at the same time that she's pulling up your girdle? Correct, correct. Like in, Amy, where do you were you? <laughs> Okay, it was like in a dressing room in the back. We're getting ready. Amy, you um, want to take this over? It was actually a friend slash photographer, and she we had brought her in to get some kind of behind the scenes photos and stuff like that. And so I don't think we were in kind of aware that she was taking pictures. So like after the event was over, and she uploaded all the photos to like a like a Dropbox or something like that. It wasn't Dropbox, but it was something like a shared drive. And so I was going, yeah, shared drive. So I was going through the photos, da, 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 and all of a sudden I get to these pictures of Kim in her girdle. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> and so I like I got on the phone. I was like, get those pictures down right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. She was freaking. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And she wasn't thinking, you know, and probably nobody, but I, I was already, I mean, even though this was a long time, I was already like 
anything out there can be out there. Yeah. You know, I was like, even if they're on a private share drive, you know, who knows what can happen? And I was like, get those pictures down right now. But that's a friend. And, uh, that's 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 a person you can trust. And this, she's a person that's always thinking about you. And y'all, you cannot have that kind of friendship if you are not giving that kind of friendship. If you are a person that is self-absorbed with yourself and you're thinking about yourself first, friendship is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I, I have sacrificed financially for Amy. I have sacrificed emotionally for Amy. I have sacrificed, you know, uh, time for Amy and vice versa. She's done the same for me. Friendship, when I say you have to be a friend to have a friend, I don't mean surface. I mean, if you see mm -hmm. your girl in a girdle and it's not appropriate and you're out there protecting my career 15 years behind, what did I say, Amy? Protecting my career yeah. before it even began. Right. That's how she's thinking. Okay? Trust. Trust, trust, trust is the number one crux. You've got, and I will tell you, and Amy, you said you've got to earn it. You got to build it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to put something out there. You got to build it. Amy, so when did you know that Kim was going to be like your ride or die, your best friend? Like when did you know you could trust <laughs> Kim? Because I want to know that story. Well, I think with me, it's a little bit different because Kim is, is naturally like, I always say she's like a warrior spirit. You know, and she's like, she's a fighter by, na you know, her nature is she's always coming out fighting. So, you know, Kim was, quote, fighting for me from day one. But for me, I think when I really knew is because Kim pushed me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And so when we first became friends and um, we we became roommates and I know this is, sounds so weird, but like. I moved across town. It was, I mean, it was still in Atlanta, but it was like across town, like maybe 30 minutes. And I like about, I had a panic attack <laughs> <laughs> in over there. I mean, it was just across town, but I mean, I know that sounds weird, no, but for me, it was weird. a big deal because yeah. I had lived in the same little area. And then we, and then we, she came in one day, we'd been living together. I don't know, maybe six months or so. And she's like, so I think we're going to move to Memphis. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> You know, I mean, I had a hard time moving across town, like 30 <laughs> minutes across town. And this was now she's like, just very, you know, just flippantly. I think we're going to move to Memphis. So it was those kind of things that I knew that I knew that God had brought us together as friends because I needed someone like Kim in my life to push me out. Yeah, but zone. you had and to trust me enough to do that, Amy. Like, you, there yeah. had to be well, something yeah. in there because that's what I'm saying. Like, you're saying I don't, you, you, you trusted that, you trusted your own instinct and you trusted me in leading that charge. And are you glad you did that? Yes, yes, I 100% glad. But that's what I would say that sometimes people with my personality that's more reserved and introverted, we need that person to come along and say, you can do this and it, you're not going to freak out if you move across town or you're, it's going to be okay if you move across to another state. That's what, you know, people like, I needed someone like you in my life to help me At that time. go where I knew, go where I knew I could go. Okay. Okay. You know, deep, I'm going to throw, deep down. right. But I'm going to throw something back at you because okay. how has that role reversed now? Now who calls who and says, I'm afraid, is this going to happen? Are we going to make it? Who does that yeah. now? Who does that now? You. Right. To me. Yes. Yeah. So now you're the person who's pushing me going, girl, we're going to do this. You can do this. Right. It's, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want people to think, oh, Kim, I need a friend like Kim. See what I'm saying? I don't want people listening to this, Amy, think I need somebody like Kim. No, you need to be that person. Y'all, right. listen to me. Listen yeah. to me. Get in close. You need to be that warrior. You need to be that trustworthy friend. You need to be that person who will guard the gu the girdle shot mm -hmm. because I, I don't want people to mistake and think oh well amy kim just helps amy that's just because she's that way now you're the warrior for me I, I call amy four times a week going oh god i can't do this i mean through the book experience stack i know i'm getting emotional you calm down one two three four five 
But I know I need to. Because <laughs> I get excited about this because people think, oh, Kim just brought Amy along. And then people who are really smart know that it, it's, a, it's a partnership. Yeah. Because um, now mm-hmm. I call Amy, she's like, girl, you got this. We're going to do this. She just said it like two mm-hmm. days ago. I'm like, I can't. I'm exhausted. I'm just, God does not have anything else for me. I mean, I was just saying all the crap she said to me, you know, 20 years ago. So I don't want people to get it twisted. To be a person that has a loyal friend, you have to become that person to yourself and to that mm-hmm. person. Would you agree mm-hmm. with that? 100%. Okay. Yes. And that's what I meant when I said at the beginning that we, it's gone right. back and forth. Sometimes I think in the beginning of our friendship, you know, I was, I was, no. I don't even know what the right word to say. I just wasn't the same confident person that I am now. Right. But, but I will tell you this, this, this leads me into, into my next step. So you, to, to have a friend, you've got to be a friend. Uh, you've got to have support and, and, and trust. Number two is you have to listen. Let me tell you something, girl, you mm-hmm. had that from day one, boo. You mm-hmm. can't have a friendship without listening. And we mm-hmm. talk, I talk, I can talk a hair off a monkey's butt. I can talk more than mm-hmm. anybody. And too often we're talking and, w- and when we listen, we're half hearing. Yes. Friendships require attention and tending to. You have to listen. Now watch this. You got to do it sometimes when you don't want to. Let me tell you something about Amy. Half the time, let me tell you something. Though. We've been friends a long time. So now she she is half listening now. So you're lying. Yeah, you're whatever lying. you're gonna say, whatever you're I'm gonna lying. say is a lie. Lying. Amy, I'll talk to her now. And she's like, I'll say hello. She's like, are you there? I say, I say, are you there? She's oh yeah. I said, what I just say? Uh <laughs> <laughs> so as the friendship as the, as the friendship goes on, you don't need to have to listen as much. But I will tell you, to build that friendship, you have to listen. And Amy, you were the best listener of anybody I've ever known in my entire life. I will receive that. <laughs> I think I'm a good listener. <laughs> but I do want to make a point about that because I have a situation right now with an, another friend that who I be, I'm I'm not going to say right now. Uh, do I, I, I know I've them become, though, right? Yes. Okay. I've become hesitant to, you know, share and open, be open and transparent with this person because I feel every time I do, they, they come back with a solution or something. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, a lot of times you don't even want a solution. You don't want to hear you. Sometimes you just, you just talk, you just need somebody just to, like you said, just listen Mm. and go, I hate that you're going through that. I'm here for you. I don't, I don't want to hear one, two, three steps of how I need to get out of what I'm in. Not every time. Now, sometimes you need that. And, you know, but, but sometimes you just need to, you just need to say what's on your heart, what's on your mind, whatever. Right. You know? You just need to listen. So I love what you said about listening. Yeah. There's something that draws people to you when you're a good listener. Yeah. All these steps I'm telling you about is how you almost court a good friendship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm giving you steps not to... Not to um, tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you what to do a little bit here. <laughs> because there's, there's, just like any other relationship, people are drawn to certain type of people. And you've got to become that yeah. person to have that person in your life. That's why I keep going back to that. So, so be a, practice good listening. And the, and the right people will come to you. They'll be drawn to you. I live with three men. My two children, who are teenagers, and my husband... They steal everything. If I get food in the house, it's gone in seconds. I have to hide it. You know what else I have to hide? I've been on this factor train for months. That is those easy prepared meals to deliver fresh to my house. And I go in to get my meal, y'all, and they're gone. My kids are now stealing my factor meals. I mean, not to talk about my delicious snacks that I have. There's over 45 different kind of breakfast items you can get. They take it all. They steal it. They stick it in the microwave and they eat. And y'all... The apple cinnamon pancakes, wait till you try those. Bacon cheddar egg bites, I love me a good egg bite. Potato bacon egg breakfast skillet, 
all of it gone. If I do not hide my factor meals, they get eaten up. <laughs> but I don't have too big of a problem with it because they're, they're good for you. They're prepared by a dietitian and, and chef, and they actually are amazing to taste. But my kids love them. So it's this wellness boost. They even have like beverage options like cold-pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. So look, the world is your oyster with factor. You're going to be able to eat to your heart's content and do it with confidence. Okay, so get factor. Enjoy the clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered right to your door and ready in two minutes. No prep, no mess. I will say though, you might want to hide them a little bit so your family doesn't steal them, especially if you want them for you. So head on over to factormeals.com slash Kim 50 to use code Kim 50 to get 50% off your first box. That's the code. Use the code Kim 50 at factormeals.com slash Kim 50 to get 50% off of your first box. Again, hide them if you want them, all your snacks, all your breakfast meals, all that. And if not, get it for the whole family because they'll love it. You've got to ditch the judgment. Mm. You do not have to approve or like all of your friends' choices. Yep. You know, good friends will accept your choices no matter what. Now, I'm not saying you don't need to forewarn them. Don't do that. Do not do that. I mean, that's not being a good friend. I'm just saying the judgment that we have for people this day and time is the biggest joke I've ever seen in my entire life. There is not a person on this planet that should be judging anyone in this world. We are all fallen. We are all broke, low down, mm -hmm. can't, can't get out of a rainstorm. Every single one of us makes mistakes more than we even share with others. And you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So there's no sense in judging anyone. Mm -mm. Because, y'all, we're going to make mistakes. I can't tell you how many mistakes Amy and I have made in our lives and in our friendship. Mm -hmm. I'm an angry texter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> how, wait, I have a question. Amy, how often do you get, like, text storms from Kim? Like, how often oh. does that happen? Every day. Every, every day. day. That's a lie. That's not every day. And I can not, show you. Not bad I've ones. I've got receipts, baby. <laughs> Oh God, this is, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting, my, my, I'm starting to shake. <laughs> I'm starting to shake because you have to understand, I hate texting. Like to me, and I, I'm really trying to well, get I over hate, to it. Wait a minute. I, I hate calling you and being in a wind tunnel every day on a meeting, but I have to do it. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you about a wind tunnel because I, 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 I mean, you sound great. You sound. Go ahead. Well, I don't hear a wind tunnel on my face. Go ahead. I, to me, texting was created to be like, yes, no, <laughs> gotcha. That's my, that's my idea of what text was created for. Yeah. Wait, can I just do a quick sidebar on this? Just real quick. When texting started, like, and we were all on the little flip phones or whatever, and you had to hit the, I didn't do like, that, that. I didn't the number like that. three key twice in order no. to get the yeah, letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel like this is never going to be a thing? Like texting's not going to be a thing. Not Everybody that way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We are no, so yes, off topic I did. And here. In fact, I, 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 right hand to God, I remember this. I remember seeing, and I've, I've tried to find it on the internet, and I can't find it anywhere, but I know because I saw it. Saturday Night Live did a sketch mm. about texting before texting became a thing, and they were making fun of it. I remember because I remember Andy Sandberg was in it, and he was coming okay. down the escalator, and he was, te and they were the whole skit was making fun of texting. I've seen it. I promise it's there. If anybody out there else has seen that. Please connect with me because I'll know I'm not crazy. We'll get back anyway. to ditch the judgment, okay? All right. So, uh, yeah. So, Kim is an excessive texter. Like, she texts, like, everything. I mean, like, good, bad, Doug. Yeah, okay. So, go back to, what did you say? You were an angry I'm, a, I'm an angry texter. <laughs> good. I think there needs to be a support group. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm and an I'm an angry texter. Text. So Okay, go ahead. This is the thing. So, I am, believe it or not, I'm very hot tempered. Now, I have been praying about it for decades, and God has really, really worked me through the whole thing. When Amy says I'm a warrior, she ain't lying. So, if there's ever an apocalypse and we're all left behind, it's a zombie attack, call me. I got your back because I will to go Kim's toe house. to toe. Oh, we're going to Kansas. 100. I mean, I'm your girl, okay? Um, so, now, when we all get to heaven, you might not want to live next door to me. I might pop off some. So you might want to live two or three doors down. But 
So I'll, I'll do angry text to Amy. And the thing about Amy and I's friendship that's so fantastic is that we argue hard. <laughs> you don't even know, because what you don't know about me is I'm an angry texter and Amy's a stubborn mule. So it's like, it's, it's, we're both very strong and we exhibit those strengths in very different ways. And when I say that has been the best parts of our friendship, have been the arguments, the knockdown, drag out fights. We just had one. Well, we were going. Well, I was going to say that I remembered my mistake. Yeah. What? Uh, what was your mistake? I can't remember. It was. It's a small surface when I'm. There's lots bigger ones. Believe me, but I can't just think of them right now. But the, so when the other day when you texted me and you were straight, you had just come on from the TSV and you were stressed out, and you remember. Oh my and gosh. Said, and it's like, I was a this little is, snippy no, back at you. Let me just tell you about snippy. Amy. Amy, and I'll say this about my husband too. And, and, and a lot of people, we're all like this. We, when we're having these moments, you think about how it affects you first, and then you react in that way. Amy and, and, Amy and I got in a little scuffle, and I was like, I started the angry text rant. I will never forget this. I was on the side of the road because Travis's car had a flat tire, and I had to go pick him up. <laughs> Swear it's always okay. me. And so, I, and so I was asking Amy to do me a favor. Well, she popped off, and I was like, then that was it. All I needed for her was to raise her voice. It was on like donkey call. So I popped off. I hung up, and I started texting. Let me tell you, angry text. And then I thought, I thought to myself, this is a true story. I thought to myself, no. Well, not quick, not right, because I kept it going about an hour or two. And at the end, you're like, Kim, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have popped off at you. You've really a lot of stress. Da, da, da. And I thought, well, I could just say, okay, I forgive you, but I'm going to let it slip. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, said, oh. I, said that I said, no, I'm not going to do it. You'll get that tomorrow morning. So I oh, went to bed. Lord. Well, and then she went on to sleep because that's how Amy could sleep to a you know, hailstorm. <laughs> and I start, I kept on texting. Let me tell you something. I kept on texting. Was three, four, four. And the next morning I get a text. Good morning, sunshine. It's a little sunshine. <laughs> I was like, good morning. I'm over it. <laughs> so look, I say all that to say. Every morning. Wait, I got to say this though real quick. <laughs> Every morning I turn over my phone. I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm like how, many, how many texts am I going to find? I'm like, oh, every morning. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your. No. I, I mean, I have said things all like. All that to say. I've, all, I've, say, I've like told Amy our friendship is over. I, I can't believe we've been friends this long. I mean, there's so many things we have said to one another. It is just fantastical if it was on film. But there's never any judgment. Amy does not judge my angry texting. <laughs> <laughs> we've had to have a mediator once. Do you remember Alice was our mediator? So I'm yes. just saying like, we, we, we are so healthy in the fact that we have at it, but there's never any judgment. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling y'all that is so important. Always give your friends the benefit of the doubt, even if they fail you, even if they hurt you, even if they don't live up to all the expectation you think they should have. Never judge. Always, always forgive and give them the benefit of the doubt. And sometimes that takes sacrifice. Well, God, a lot of times that takes sacrifice. All the time. Yeah. Okay. Don't talk behind your friend's back. Let me tell you something. Gossip is dangerous. Okay. And a lot of times us women use it to cement like our social standing or our, or, or, or putting the net out to see if there's a couple of other friends we can nab. Don't do that. Uh, I talk behind Amy's back all the time to my family and she does the same to me. But that is in, <laughs> that's the truth. So forget about it. So forget it. Forget you just report. said. Just throw that out. No, I've got a preface, but that is still in the family. Everybody's <laughs> friends. And what happens is Amy calls my mother, talks about me, and then mom calls me, talk about Amy. And then Allison calls my mom to talk about me and Amy. And then your dad, don't forget your dad. My dad, my dad said the other day, what did he say about you, Amy? I swear he goes, the girl's exercising too much, Kim. I said, dad, he goes, I'm going to she's going to pull something or do something. It's too much. And I said, well, I said, he said, he said, he said I said, you tell her. He goes, you tell her, you tell her I said it. Oh I my said, God. Dad, dad. And he said, I'm going to tell you something else. 
I tell you, Sammy. Oh my God. He said, oh Lord. He said, Sammy, losing her hearing. I said, Dad, you've lost yours. That's the problem. <laughs> he said, I called her name three times. She didn't even look at me. So we all talk bad about each other. But Amy would never go and talk bad about me to anybody ever. No. She'd smack me around a little bit, but she would never deny my character or talk about it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now, I talk bad about Amy every Saturday night on our show just because it's for her own good. <laughs> now, this, this next one, um, I was reading all these rules. It says respect your friends and their boundaries. I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> do you agree with that, Amy? No. Wait, wait. Second follow-up question. <laughs> do you wish Kim agreed with that? <laughs> what she has to say about it. I just, I just think to have the friendship, and I think it's good for, for surface friendships and friendships that have, um, you know, that are more acquaintance friendships. But to develop a friendship like Amy and I have, there can be no boundaries. Yeah, I think I would say that. Of course, you've got things that everybody would agree to. Like you don't, you know, there are certain boundaries of like humanness or whatever. What is but that? Yeah, what, is that? Think- what is that? What is that? Like not hitting people or something like that. Well, you know, you've or, hit me several or, times. I've never hit you. <laughs> you've hit me before. Never. But usually it's when I. That's a lie. When I, I have never. Hit you. you are lying on this podcast. I have never hit you. You've hit me ever. You hit me all the time. Amy going. All the time. That's so you're getting, getting mad, strong, you hit Amy, me. too. I do get a little. I do. I have. Yeah. <laughs> Not hit, don't, I don't, uh-uh. I'm like punch you. There is no boundaries. You slap, you slap me upside my arm or knock me in the arm. And then bony knuckles, yes you do. I've mm-hmm. never done that to you. I verbally slapped you around, but I've never hit you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember a time you've hit me. Thank you. You just wanted to cover your own tracks. I like Amy's like, I have never remembered a time that you've hit me. <laughs> yeah, I haven't remembered. Everything no, but, is but fine. I, Amy, I want to say Amy, this blink about twice boundaries. If you need, Amy, if you need help, blink twice. Okay. <laughs> just, it's okay. To ha- Shut up, Zach. To have these kind of friendships like Amy and I have, and, and I think that people are drawn to our friendship, Amy, is because we really, it is truly, there is no boundaries. There's no boundaries. Would you say there's any boundaries with our friendship? No. Mm -mm. I just think to have a really strong connection that is, is what you guys are seeking. You gotta, you gotta lay it out there. You've got to be your true self. Um, and you, you have to say the tough things and you have to receive the tough things and you have to, Mm -hmm. um, that's true love. And that's vulnerability. That's where the vulnerability comes in, I think, because if there's, you have to be vulnerable to, to put it out there. And like you said, to have no boundaries to, there's nothing off limits to, to talk about or to, you know, deal with. You have to, and you have to, and it's hard, it's hard work to do that. The last one I want to talk about is, um, forgive, forgive, seek forgiveness when you screw up. Forgive people or your friends who, who, when they do you wrong. Expect more of yourself and from others. Um, relationships are, they're never going to give you 100% of what you need. And when you're always looking outside of yourself or outside of your, you know, faith to have that person fulfill that need that you have, that's never going to happen. And, and I always say, don't look at the need a friend can fill in you. Look in a need that you can fulfill in a friend. Mm-hmm. It's always about giving. It's not about taking. Always. Um, And it's exhausting and it's tired. And like Amy said at the beginning, it takes a lot of work. A lot of work. But for those of you who who say, who are sending these emails saying, I don't have a friend, I I want to tell you, um, I believe there are good friends out there for you. Don't you, Amy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I think, I think, like you said, I think you have to just, um, I think the, the number one, the first one point of your, of your points, the be a friend, you've got to be a friend to have a friend. I think that's where a good place to start. 
Start there. Start listening. Mm-hmm. Start opening yourself up. Start being vulnerable. Start start in these small little moments and, and watch those friendships come to you and then cultivate them. It takes a long time. I mean, I've been friends for 25 years. Now, I'm an all-in person. Okay? So I decided, okay, this is girl. I prayed for my very best friend my whole life since I was a little girl in my room with my Sean Cassidy poster singing to my Donnie and Marie Osmond records. <laughs> and um, when I, when Amy and I met each other, I decided, well, this is, this is her. Okay, we're doing it. And I drug her <laughs> kicking and screaming because Amy was never, she doesn't let a lot of people in. And I just remember she would be exhausted. At the end of the night, sometimes at our talks, and she'd just like, I just can't anymore. I'm just exhausted. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You're laughing a little too hard, redhead. Um, it is, but but it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth it's it worth though. It. It's worth it to put in the to the hard work because I, I'm I'm finding more and more, and the older I get, that the friendship that you and I share is is very rare. And and I think everybody wants that. Everybody wants that die hard, ride or die friend. Can everyone have it, Amy? Yes. There you go. I. I believe everybody can have it for sure. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. We always close every episode with rapid fire. Rapid fire questions. Now, when we, when you say rapid fire to Amy, that means two and a half minutes after you've asked the question. I know. I'm so not good at rapid fire. You got this. I feel good about this. You can do it. (laughs) You can do it. Okay. I'm going to do my best. You got this girl. I believe. Okay. I believe. I got it. Okay. If you could create a slogan for your life, what would it be? (laughs) <laughs> uh things can change <laughs> <laughs> what wait that's see, that's not that's terrible and that's not what i meant that's I mean, terrible I mean, that's like, terrible think of something else <laughs> think of something that's not good that's, that's um it just, it gets sorry, better, i just peed a little bit on myself <laughs> <laughs> you can create a song for your life. That was too honest, Amy. That no, was like things can change. <laughs> no, it should be things are gonna change. They're gonna change. Okay, I don't no, know. You know, no, I don't know. I don't think that. Don't like, anybody that. can change. Okay, okay, that's good. Like, think, uh, okay, that's good. I just want to like. <laughs> okay, wait now, Kim. Now, Kim. Oh, no, wait, don't, don't, don't take up for her staying in first. She's, she's tough. Trust me, that's right. hilarious. That was that. Yeah. That's staying in, and it made my whole day. Okay, second oh question. Gosh. If you could create a slogan for my <laughs> life, what would it be? Oh my gosh! Oh God! Come on, y'all. <laughs> if you could, if I could, um, for Kim's life. Come on, let's get her. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, come back, come back. That's a little bit of an inside joke. Do you remember that, Kim, in Nashville? <laughs> yes, do it. Do it again. Come on, let's get it. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. So good. Okay. What is one this is going down? Here. This is fantastic. This is gold. What is one friend tradition we have? One friend tradition? Girl, we got many. I know. Um, Swear so. <laughs> When we lived on the other side of town, Kim and I would go shopping every Saturday. Yes. Every Saturday morning, we would go shopping, and we'd go. We'd always go to North Point Mall in Alpharetta, Georgia, and we would always go into the mall through Macy's. And the this one entrance, and I swear to you, Mace, that smell right now. Oh God, Amy, stop! I can smell it right now. It makes and it gives me all those visions of us going shopping every Saturday. Smell that that Macy smell. Isn't that and great? All that is that a tradition? That's fantastic. We have so many. Yeah. That's just fantastic. Okay. Do you know that that smell is most um, connected yeah. to memory? That's oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah, that's really yeah. cool. And I'm gonna leave. Yes. You. I think I smell butt. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> what is the most outrageous fashion trend you ever followed? I ever followed? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Outrageous fashion trend I ever followed. Um. Oh God, this is torture. Wait, I don't know what it is. Probably like I'm not very outrageous. <laughs> Probably um I've got one for you. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, we, Amy used to wear those jumpers. When I met her, she would wear these yes. jumpers. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Bless that it. was the late nineties. Who remembers those? Oh, I the do. jumpers. Is that like an adult big one? Prairie seat. collar. Prairie, prairie collar. Oh. Yeah. It was not Ooh. good. It was a trend. No, that though. was, that yeah, was that, a trend. It was a, it was a big trend. But looking back, I'm like, why? Why did that happen? <laughs> what was what when you were young, what was one of the most outrageous things that happened to you? I know. Uh, this is sad that I can answer your rapid fire no, faster no, than you can. Okay, outrageous, outrageous. That happened to me. Oh, my God. Well, I got hit by a car. Thank you. I was going to say you got hit by a car. You got Thank hit you. by a car? Are you okay? <laughs> Amy. No. No, she is not. Well, what happened? I did. I got hit by a car. Do you want to hear the story? I'll make it real quick. Yeah. So we were at, it was when I was like, probably like eight or nine, and we were, and you know, there was, we lived in a neighborhood. And so we would play in the street of, a, you know, with the neighbors and there was kind of like a hill and the cars would come up over the hill. And so we were playing in the street. And so, and we were in this ride. And so, so he said, cars coming. And so it was like scattered. And so I started running to the other, the neighbor's house on the other side. And for some reason, I don't know why I was like, no, I want to run to my yard. <laughs> so I stopped and turned around to run on to uh. the other side of the street and a car hit me, and I don't. <laughs> and, That's so um, Amy. That is so. I know. And what's so funny is I don't remember the car hitting me. I remember running across the street, and then the next thing I know, I'm sitting on the ground in front of the car, just going, "What happened?" That's a bad sign. I was like sitting. I was like sitting and just sitting there, going, "How did I get down here? What happened?" And everybody's like freaking out. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's one of the most outrageous things. Have you ever been caught in an embarrassing situation? Share the details. I know this one too. And I didn't even oh write God. these rapid fire. Em embarrassing situation. <laughs> Skirt. I'm sure I have. Oh yeah. Well, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. This is so, <laughs> well, I've got a bunch. Cause I, okay, Zach, okay. this is becoming not very rapid, but I'm a klutz. And so I fall down a lot. <laughs> okay. Continue. Okay, so when we lived in Nashville, I worked at Forefront Records, a record company. I mean, that's a pretty cool job, right? Okay. I was walking, getting ready to walk down the stairs, and there was two of the like the executives walking, but coming up behind me, and I just like slipped boom, 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 all the way down the stairs. And then like two like two nights later, we were at an event for the record company where we were we were handing out like these things that was like Kim, she's not laughing. And it was at a, like a, a baseball stadium. So it was like oh, metal no. bleachers. I was, oh, there. I was there. I was there. I was there. I was there. And I missed the stair. <laughs> I fell. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. There's like, so oh many. There's so I, many. I was like, what if my bosses, <laughs> the two men that saw me fall in the office, saw me? What if they saw me fall again? They're like, this girl can't walk. We laughed oh, so what? hard about that. Okay. All right. All right. We got to pull it together. Oh. God, it's going to be an hour long thing. It's yeah. We're going up for an hour. Um, If you could trade places with me for a day, what would you do? Oh God. <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> this is torture. This is torture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a hard one. It would, if I try. <laughs> If I trade places with you, would I be you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a freaky Friday. If you freaky Friday'd Kim. I would so love I'd it. So I'd still be me. I'd I'm still be me, but I'd be in Shut up. Forget the question. Forget the question. No, I'm moving on. Who is your celebrity crush? Who is your celebrity crush? I'm moving on. We're cutting the question. Oh right now, I would say oh. it's um, Uhtred, son of Uhtred. Oh, God, yes, from, Jesus. From uh, the last kingdom. And he don't, even have to, he don't even have to bathe. Dirty fingers and all, right? No. Okay. Oh, you know, I want to say it's Uhtred, not the actor. It's Uhtred. Uhtred son of Uhtred. The okay. Character. All right. Okay. Yeah. What do you hope for our friendship in the future? Okay. <laughs> These are. <laughs> I want us to see us continue to succeed in our business. I'd love to see us do some, um, uh, like not charity work together, but like some meaningful work. You know, right. continue to do meaning meaningful work in 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 what we're doing. Okay, you don't want to be one of them old like eighty three year old women that are out 
you know, skydiving. I saw that today. There was two like old no. best friends. Okay, I'm right. There we go. <laughs> not- I don't want to skydive. Do you want to skydive, Kim? Not, I would like to, like, if, if sorry, if, if, like, after Travis died. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, if, <laughs> I think it'd be good if we got us two little little cottages, like, little side-by-side, you know. And I think I, w- I would want my own house. Oh, know, God, I can't I live like- with you again. There's no way. No. You're too... But I wouldn't mind living side-by-side, side, like a little Amy cottage. Chew- Amy chews loud. She slams cabinet doors. I mean, it's I can't do it. You have mesophonia. Uh-huh, I do. Okay. I it has anything to do with it. Okay, it does. Okay, what was your first impression of me? Tell the truth. My very first impression of you was before I met you was I thought you were beautiful. I thought you looked like Princess Di. That's the truth. Okay, but I did. I thought you because I remember I saw you at church and I thought saw you sitting down there. I thought you looked like Princess Di, and I did think that you were going to be stuck up. I, you are nothing like I thought you were going to be, and that was my own whatever insecurity. That was your judgment. Whatever. That was your judgment. Yeah, I just said that. Okay, I just said that. I just said that. Okay, just saying. So, um. I thought you were going to be, you know, uppity because you looked so regal. You looked so like, you looked like a princess. I mean, of course I had to think you were going to be stuck up. Okay. Well. And like really hooty tooty. And then can I tell the rest? Sure. But then when I did actually meet you, you came around the corner and you didn't have a stick of makeup on. And I don't think you had a bra on I didn't. and you had on a t-shirt and shorts and you came on, Hey, yeah. and like, <laughs> you know, and I was like, yep. You're nothing like so, and I, I liked you immediately after that first impression. Well, that's good. Very honest. That was very good. honest of you. Okay, last question. Mm-hmm. If you had the power to invent a new word, what would it be, and what would it mean? Um, I think a new word. I don't really want a new word. I like the words that, that are out there. <laughs> 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 All right, and that's the show. Thanks for listening and watching. Thank everybody. you for joining, Amy. I love you, girl. Thank you for being on the friendship show. I failed rapid fire. <laughs> I failed. I'm so bad. Oh. I want to say this too. We, as much as we talk deep and serious, we have such silly, <laughs> crazy things that we do. And I'm going to leave Amy with this one last thing. I think Uh-oh. I smell butt. Thanks. Amy. <laughs> Can I name the episode that? I think it's my thing. <laughs> bye, Amy. I'll call. I'll text you on the way home. Bye. I'll call you on the way home. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, Zach. I hope somebody got something out of that. I really do. <laughs> I, I, you know, Amy and I get caught up in our own little world, but it is true about friendship. And I know people are desperate for good friends, and it. And I truly believe that um, they're out there for you. They're out there for you. And I think people are longing for the deep, deep connection. Don't you? Oh, 100%. I mean, here's the thing about Amy and you, though. And I really do. Because your friendship is so different and so much deeper than, honestly, anyone I've ever met. Because you, your friends, you work together, your business partners, you vacation together, you, like... She's just part of Yeah, but we always haven't done that. We've all, we've, I mean, Amy and I worked separate careers for decades. Right. But you know what? We were always working towards something together. But I I think that, that it, it, my relationship with Amy takes as much work as my marriage takes. That's funny you say that. Okay. So wait, can I just tell a little story? So when, like, I don't know, like six months ago, eight months ago, whenever I was there, you know, a couple times ago. Yeah. Um, and I was in Atlanta and I was meeting Travis for something like at your house. I don't know why right. I was at your house. Right. And Travis was like, oh, yeah, I'll be there like in five minutes. Like, I'm just walking Amy's dog. Right. <laughs> and I just and it's something about that moment where it just was like it felt like everyone in the fam. It was just all mm-hmm. one big family. Right. It was like Travis. And it, he didn't say it in a way that was like he was upset about it. He wasn't. It was just something that he had to do. It's like, I got to put my pants yeah. on. I got to walk Amy's dog. I got to do, you know, eat food, whatever. It was mm-hmm. all the same. And it was just I. there was a moment really that I had in that moment where I was like, this is special. 
But it's special because we've made it that way. That's my point. Right. Where there's not some magical elixir or um, I'm not some magical per- person. Amy's not a magical person. That's why I asked her the question, do you think everyone can have what we have? And she said, yes. If you are willing to do what you have to do, it's a lot of hard work. And I'm telling you, people, we, we, we look at relationships, we look at romantic relationships on Netflix or on streaming or, you know, and we think it's just this perfect, it, there's nothing about relationships that's easy. Nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but every bit of the work, the sacrifice, the arguing, the, the realness, the fights, the makeups, everything about it is worth it. Okay. And, yeah. You can't hold grudges. You've got to forgive. You have to be a person that's not judgmental. Even if you don't agree with what they're doing, I'm not saying, you know, don't confront, don't share your opinions. That's where I'm talking about. There's there's boundaries, of course, in healthy relationships in certain circumstances. But when it comes to having true best friend, and I don't know anybody that doesn't want a best friend, especially women, especially mm-hmm. women. And I'm going to say it is vital for you women watching this that you have your girlfriends and your friendships. Everybody wants the sex in the city friendships. Everybody yeah. wants that. You know, everybody wants the Gail and Oprah's, right? And, and I just know it takes a long time. And there are certain things that your character has to be and in, in the way you love yourself and the way you're a friend to yourself and the way that you are and treat yourself is a direct relation of what kind of friend you're going to be. Yeah, because it starts with you. It starts with you. It's a reflection of you. Yes. You are, what you put out is what you get back in right. everything. And so everybody who's sent emails to us, I'm going to tell you, first of all, you have a friend right here in me and Zach. You have a friend in this show. We, we're always here um, to encourage you, to lift you up, to hold you accountable, to in- to help you um, uh, through tough times because y'all have done that for us. No one is yep. better than anyone. We all need each other to thrive and survive. And so if you're needing that friend, email us, share with us. There's no judgment here. Everything here is we believe in you because you believe in us. We are the friend to you because you have been such good friends to us. And so just remember, at the end of the day, um, you're not alone. We're all in this together. And to have a friend, you got to be a friend. All right? We love you. In fact, tell people about the podcast. Uh, to share it with people. And um, be encouraged this week. Know that uh, get out there and make a few new friends. Try these tips and tricks out about how to build friendships and let us know how it works out for you. Till next time, I'm Kim. I'm Zach. And we love you. Bye. Bye. Yo, now no, you going to go this. crazy on me? No, I just gave you the little intro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that go back. Why did you get rid of my stuff? <laughs> Hold on. Just I'm going back to my question. Just, just stay. Because you're getting, you're getting delete happy now. <laughs> So this is the this is, we're talking the way only friends can, Kim, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my I God, love that so Amy, much. I swear. I knew rapid oh. fire for her was going to be like, wah, wah. I'm not a rapid fire person. <laughs>